So the following morning, the woman made the twins get up. You lazy things. Can't lie around in bed all day, you know. And gave them each a piece of bread, shouting that they should hurry since there was work to be done. On the way through the forest, which was deeper and darker than it ever seemed before, Hansel crumpled the crusts in his pocket and stopped every so often to throw a crumb on the ground. What are you doing, son? Oh, waving to the squirrels, father. They look so happy today. You little goon. There are no squirrels in this forest. They'd be too afraid. But by the time she had told him, they were already at the clearing where the fire was to be built. Now stay here and go to sleep again if you want to. But don't go anywhere until we come back for you. There are beings and creatures in the woods. <laughs> when it was dark, they finally fell asleep and no one came to bring them home. Still, when the moon rose, they were not afraid, because their trail had been marked. <sighs> Come on, Gretel. We'll get back without any trouble. All we have to do is follow the crumbs. <coughs> That's strange. You ought to be right here. Are there any over where you are? Everywhere they looked, there was not a single crumb. The birds of the forest, being hungry themselves, had come and eaten them all. This time, with the woods full of terrible night noises, they were truly lost. All through that night, they wandered in circles. And the following day they did the same, from sunrise until it was dark again. But there was no way at all. No trail, no path, no sign that was friendly. And always there came weird and peculiar noises. Sounds that chilled their hearts so that they threw their arms around each other for protection. It's getting awful spooky in here. And I'm hungry. We didn't even have those crusts last night since you used them to mark the trail. I'm pretty tired, too. Are you tired, Gretel? Oh, yes. We've been walking for so long. Couldn't we rest under that funny tree there and, and sleep a little bit? Yeah. They fell asleep under the curious tree that had a blue trunk. When they awoke in the morning, there was a strange being singing a mournful song in the branches. They jumped up quickly and ran until they came to a clearing not ten feet away. And there they saw something wonderful. Oh, Hansel, it's a house. Look, a little house. And look, the roof is made of candy. And the walls are made of fudge cake. And the doorknobs are shut. Oh, look, the, the knocker is an apple pie! Hansel reached up and broke off a piece of the door knocker. And it was apple pie. Gretel twisted away part of the wall. And that was a fudge cake. The whole house, the chimneys, shutters, windows, drain pipes, they were all something wonderful to eat. Vanilla and strawberry sundaes, peanut clusters, pistachio eclairs, almost anything you could think of. But while they were eating, a scrawny old voice called out. Eating! Eating! Always eating! Who is eating up my house? And the lemon sherbet door flew open all at once. The children screamed. For there, jumping about in a pointed leather hat, was Muzzle Dork, the Witch of the Woods. She was tall and skinny, with hands like the claws of a crab, and a big orange wart on her nose. <laughs> 
nibble, nibble, time is over, brats. Now it's my turn. I think I'll have you in a stew with bat gravy and mushroom mash. <laughs> Why, it's been years since I had a boy and girl supper. <laughs> Before they could turn and run away, they were wound up with invisible rope and tossed into large wooden cages next to Muzzledork's boiling pot. She used her magic to capture them because her eyes were almost blind from living in the deep woods so long. Now you, little girl, you will do the work. <laughs> Go and fetch some ice cream sodas from the well outside and some cake from the wall. We're going to fatten up your brother because I've decided to eat him first. <laughs> and don't try to escape since I have a doom beastie guarding the grounds. He usually eats toadstools and moss, but he'll also chew up little girls. <laughs> Terrified, Gretel crept out to the witch's well and drew up a pail of vanilla ice cream soda which she gave to Hansel. And sure enough, there was a doom beastie watching her the whole time, so she could not run for help. Good! Now we'll feed your brother on candy and soda until he's good and fat. <laughs> and when he's as fat as I want him, I'll put him in a pie. Hurry off now, and get some chocolate doorknobs. And you, Hansel. Stick your finger out through the cage so I can see how fat you are now. My eyes are not too good. Thinking cleverly, Hansel took up a piece of straw from the floor of the cage and stuck it out through the bars. Why, there's nothing to you. All skin and bone. Worse than me. It will take weeks to fatten you up. But never mind, we'll do it. My pot is boiling and waiting. Oh, you'll be tasty with a little bat mash and red pepper and Bermuda onion. <laughs> but as the weeks went by and Gretel ran back and forth to the well and Hansel stuffed himself with good food, there was no way for old Muzzledork to tell how fat he was. Because each time she asked to feel his finger, he held out the piece of straw instead. And each time Gretel thought of running away to try and find help, the horrible doom beastie snarled at her and showed its teeth. Finally, after a month, the witch lost patience. I don't care how skinny you are, brat. I'm hungry, and when I'm hungry, I eat. Tonight, young man, I'm having you for dinner. And tomorrow, <laughs> your sister. <laughs> the witch set about putting more logs under her boiling pot and got an old ladder out of her barn to lean against the side. But why are you putting that ladder there? To climb up on, of course, and dump your brother in after I've killed him off. How else would I get him in such a tall pot? Gretel realized this was her only chance to save her brother and herself. So she laughed and pointed at the light. Why, that silly old thing won't hold your weight and Hansel's. It probably would fall apart with just you on it. And then you'd never get to have any little boy stew with your silly bat gravy or whatever it is. It had better be strong enough or you'll make me a new one. That Muzzledork climbed the ladder to test it, and when she was high enough, Gretel ran forward, grabbed the bottom rungs, and tipped the whole thing up, dumping the witch into her own boiling pot. There was a great hissing splash and a thick bubbling noise. It was true, and not only had the bars disappeared, but the huge boiling pot turned into a chest of silver and gold. And outside, the doom beastie changed into a big, friendly farm horse that neighed a cheerful hello. Come on, sister, quick! Let's get this gold up and over 
horses back and then climb on ourselves. A good old horse always knows his way back to his master's bar. So they tied on the chest, gave the horse a lump of chocolate doorknob, and off they galloped through the forest until they came to the very village where their father's house was. All the neighbors gathered round them, gazing in awe at such wealth, and exclaiming, Look! It's the woodcutter's children! We thought they were lost. Eaten up by beings and creatures. Instead, they're rich! And fat besides! No! the commotion the children could hardly get through the crowd but when they finally did they found their father running to meet them he picked them up one in each huge arm the big horse trotting behind them with the chest on his back strangely enough the woodcutter's evil wife had vanished in a puff of smoke at the same time the witch had been boiled up in her own pot in the woods so all their troubles were at an end and they never gave a thought to going hungry again. The woodcutter bought a brand new axe to cut down even bigger trees. The children had hot fudge sundaes whenever they wanted. And the big happy horse, as a reward, got a lifetime supply of chocolate doorknobs. Ah!